Hey guys, welcome to Isaiah's Reviews, and today I'll be reviewing the Sumsonic Coca Plus Mini HD 1080p digital video action camcorder with a smart remote, it's Wi-Fi, it's got a magnet on the back, and it's got a sticky mount on the back as well. There's three colors to the Plus models, it's black, a blue, and a pink, so it should fit uh, everybody's criteria for color. This also includes a free app to connect up to this thing so you can actually see what you're recording. Got a built-in rechargeable lithium-ion battery, which is about 80 minutes of continuous recording. That's with the Wi-Fi turned off. Video, it's got eight megapixels on a CMOS sensor. It, it records in 1080p at 30 frames per second, 720p at 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second under 720, and it also has that Wi-Fi range of 30 feet. I've already messed with it a little bit. I was able to get like 50 feet of range. It's got a 145 degree wide viewing angle. Uh, it does curve around the edges, sort of give that little fisheye look. Uh, if you like that, then this will be right down your alley. If you don't, there's software that you can get, the video editing software, that will actually straighten everything up for you. I have some, uh, just an example, I, I use CyberLink uh, Power Director. Uh, it, the newest uh, edition of that will straighten those uh, edges out for you and kind of anti-fish eye your video. Comes with a remote control, a Wi-Fi remote, so that you can take photos with this thing, start your recording, or lock a video in to where it doesn't loop around and accidentally erase your video. Cause it's got a 1000 milliamp per hour rechargeable lithium ion battery built in. The specs on this thing's 43 by 43 by 34 millimeters. So it's really tiny, almost like a little bitty cube. And the remote range is like 60 feet. So they say 30 feet of range to your wireless device. That may depend on your device and they might've said that to be on the safe side. I'm actually getting like 50 feet before I see my signal on my app, on their app, start to twinkle down and almost disconnect. So that's like 50 feet, the remote's 60 feet. And this does take a micro SD card up to 32 gigs. And it only takes three hours to charge this from zero to 100%. So now the camera will just slide right out. We'll set this to the side for right now. And it's got a box with all the goodies and stuff in the bottom of it. Uh, with with the uh, specs, so we already talked about the 1080p 30 frames per second. This will take photos in 20 megapixels, 16 megapixels, 12 megapixels, and 8 megapixels. So that's not bad at all. The 20 megapixel thing surprised me. Inside the box, we do... Uh, have the manual. The last half of it is in English uh, and it basically goes through and tells you how to do everything but I'm going to do that for you right now and then it comes with the remote. Uh, it's got a piece of plastic here you pull it. It just takes one of those standard button batteries. The CR2032 uh, battery those are standard and fairly cheap but you actually push this once to take a photo hold it down to activate the recording and push it again to stop recording then you get your charging cable you do not get a wall port charger but you can just use your cell phone charger that'll be fine it comes with a micro usb which is a good thing because that's kind of the standard right now even though we're about to move out of the micro usb being the standard Right now, it is the standard, so everybody's got an abundance of those. And some Sonic also sells their version of this tripod, which grips around anything. Uh, you can turn these legs any which way you want it, but this makes for a great uh, little stabilizer for your camera. You can just screw it on here and carry it around like so, and it makes for a good shooting device to hold like this. And uh, it also comes with a cell phone mount. Your cell phone will just slide right in there. This works great, screws right into their uh, quarter inch threads. And this is a quarter inch thread bottom. It is not plastic, so that's a plus. Uh, but it is kind of shallow. So when you do screw this in, it uh, actually will stop and uh, not go all the way into the threads. A way to remedy that would be to go to your hardware store and get a smaller uh, quarter inch screw or you can put, kind of like I have, put some uh, black rubber O-rings uh, that's the same size as quarter inch down over that. Put a couple of them so that it'll smush up against that and kind of push back against the camera and hold it in there straight. Uh, you'll have to unscrew this, but be real gentle with it. It takes like a quarter turn to unlock this. Uh, do not force this thing or this will break over time. Mainly you can use a uh, coin. So if you just keep a coin in your pocket to do this. It takes a little quarter turn if that and that'll come right off, no problem. Because these guys will hold those turns, but if you're cranking down on it super hard, you might break each one of these off, and then you're left with a capless camera. So that wouldn't be a good thing. But here's your micro USB port here, and you can use an external charger, an external battery pack to charge this. So if you're out on the go, and you're recording, 
and you want this and you're not going to be recording for a little bit uh, throw an external charger onto this thing and charge it up while you're not using it that's what i do with all my cameras i have those micro usb ports on there and here is the micro sd card slot all right so now that i have an sd card in we'll talk about what the remote can do you just take a picture and you get one blink that's one photo you hold it down and while it's recording it will just blink and to get it to stop recording you just hold the record button down and then you see the light goes solid again and that's how you know it's not recording anymore if you want to take a photo with this camera you just push the top you'll take one photo you see one blink of the light and then you hold it down and then release and then now it'll blink and it's in recording mode and to stop that you just push it again up on the top and you'll see it comes back out of recording all right for download the app on the android uh, you just put in iShare Cam, which I've already searched that before. So you just type in iShare Cam. It'll be the first one that pops up. I've already, you'll download that. I already have it downloaded, so I'm going to open it now. So after you open the iShare app, you're going to want to cut your Wi-Fi on. And then cut your camera on. And there it's on now. You hear the little noise. Uh, you want to push the Wi-Fi on the side of the camera refresh the app here then you'll see the iShare come up push that add to and then boom you're in there but uh, let's do this right here so you can see this is recording from over here to over there so you can see the lag and the movement and how it'll catch up and stuff. There, there are other apps that you can use other than iShareCam. Uh, just search that. You can use any kind of uh, uh, streaming app that you can find for it. Let's go into the settings. Here's your white, white balance. You do have uh, daylight, cloudy, fluorescent, and incandescent. Uh, I'm just going to leave it in auto because we'll be going in and out of different... I'm going to change this to 60 hertz. Uh, one of the things that's aggravated me about this, which uh, this is the first time I've had an SD card in while I've been kind of messing with it, but you, you have to go in here and change it back to 60 hertz once you like shut down from it. Uh, it doesn't keep the settings for some reason. So I'm going to go ahead and format the SD card, which I highly recommend if you put one in to format that card. And here you'll turn the slow motion on or off. And slow motion would be good for the uh, 720, 60 frames per second would be the only time I would want to use that through the camera. I would just switch over to 720, 60 frames per second and do it in uh, some editing software. This is where you can change the orientation to where if you flip the camera upside down and want to use it upside down, you turn upside off or on there. And that's kind of it. Here's where you change your uh, resolution settings. Now you've got, there's your 720, 60 frames, 720, 30, and 1080, 30 frames per second. So I'll leave it on 1080. Uh, this shows you your status. Uh, we're in auto white balancing. If we was in that fluorescent or incandescent or cloudy or whatever, it would show over here. Here's your Wi-Fi signal strength to the camera, your battery, so which we can go to camera here where we just take photos. We just took a photo. Now, where do we go to view these things at? Well, we'll go right here in this folder, and then there's the photo we took, which you can zoom in on, and that's not the best in the world <laughs> by no means uh, but the conditions in here for possibly that may not be that as well i don't know but here you can download it to your phone or trash it i'll trash that delete the photo let's look at the video video viewing is not supported but you can download the video apparently so let's download the video download time is 39 seconds confirm download yes all right it shows up in your gallery as i share cam uh, here's the photo and video will show up there. Okay, so we zoom in and that looks really good. So you can't, that looks really, really good. You can see we get too close in there and it will get a little grainy, but what do you expect, right? But as far as that goes, I think that did a great job. This is supposed to be 20 megapixels, remember? So that's not too bad. Let's look at Make sure my media is turned up. All right. Look at the video that we recorded earlier. All 
All right, here's the assumption that I have. I've tried different amps. I've tried different ways of being able to figure out how I can play this back through my phone, an Android phone, and have audio. I can't do that, apparently, because it's MOV. Uh, it's kind of aggravating, I guess. So basically, I have to take this, the footage I film off of this off of my phone here, off this SD card, uh, put it into editing software, and then that way I can view the audio. Now the microphone is right there on the side if you're wondering where that is. It should be nice if it had an option inside this to either do MP4 or MOV. So I understand the MOV point of it for the Apple people because that's mainly what uh, Apple handles is the MOV format. But may I suggest that MP4 uh, format come along with this so that we can manipulate it and handle it a lot better on the Android side of things and the PC side of things for that matter. This app works really well. It's just the lack of options in here uh, for MOV versus MP4. It would be nice to have those two options in there for recording. There's no option to turn off your timestamp. So there's nothing. So that needs an adjustment. That, so right now they're getting a ding, in my opinion, for non-MP4 format and uh, the timestamp across the top that needs to be addressed. Also, the back magnet is very stout on this, and it also has on the back a way to flick this over, flick it back around, and now you've got this sticky thing here, and it's very sticky. <laughs> you can see it sticks. And you can also sort of angle this down, but if you angle it too far down, it'll uh, slump all the way. You, you've got a little play, and I think it's this magnet in the back here allowing it to, because it's it'll stick to something magnetic on the inside a little bit, it feels like. But you can angle it a little bit down like that, but if you go too far with your angle, it'll just fall over, and it's the kind of the same way on the other side of it. On the other side of it, though, you can go about the same distance. So, so really just focus on it being a flat surface thing, something magnetic there. Take it, flip it around, a window or something like that. If you want to do a vlog and you're in your car or something, then you can use the sticky side of it. And I feel like it would hold. And you can also wash this off and then air dry it with a hair dryer or something like that because you don't want a cloth or uh, anything like that to, to dry, to come in contact with this because pieces of the cloth will stick to it and then it'll lose its tactile. And then be really gentle of this hinge here. Whenever you're on a magnetic surface, try to uh, rock this off or up like that uh, so that you do, do not tear off this hinge. Because if you do that, well then you're losing kind of some of the good features of this camera. So be a little delicate with it as far as this hinge is concerned. All right, so it's not the best condition in the world to be testing this, but maybe that's a good thing so you can see see it at its worst as possible you know, video that you could possibly get anyway. You can see it's like 3 o'clock in the evening. It's raining. It's dreary. It's not the best lighting at all for anything like this. So I want to show you some transitioning from inside the garage to outside to see how well the auto light balance and how well that looks. So let's go outside to inside. Back to outside again. And I'm not even going to use my phone for this. I've had, I have stuff like this to where you, you know, you're supposed to pair it up to your phone and stuff. And you can look at your phone if you want, but a lot of times I just wing it and I don't even look. And sometimes the footage surprises me and sometimes I'm like, ah, it's a little off. But for the most part, it's all work. I can work with all the footage that I, that I take like this. So it's not bad. So let's go to the mailbox. So here you can see if it bounces any, and I'm also using that tripod to hold it as well, which I recommend because it kind of makes it a little stable. But, uh, yeah, let's go to the mailbox. If it bounces much or anything like that, how does the footage look? Is it stable? I don't know. Let's go back because it is raining, and it's cold, and it's wet, and there should be water getting all over this camera. Hopefully it makes it, and if it does, that'll show you that it'll last. <laughs> Alright, so it's not the best conditions by far, but it's pretty dark in here, and I've got my phone on my suction cup mount here, and I've got you at the top 
of the window. And if the audio and everything else picks up fine on this, I would actually love this for vlogging because the camera is so small, it's out of your peripheral. I mean, I don't even know it's there. I've got full view of my windshield, and I'm using the sticky side. It's not going anywhere off this windshield, and I love that. But the only thing that really, really super sucks that stops this from getting a solid 5 out of 5 right now is the MOV format and the timestamp at the top. Like, if they would be able to update that through the app or come up with an update where you can go to their website, some Sonic's website, and download a firmware update for this thing to allow MP4 into a, the app to be able to take the timestamp off that would be great, but right now I'm loving the simplicity of this and the controls of it. I love the app. The app connects right to it right away. It's not that confusing at first when you go into it. Just hit the cog, the top right, and then pick iShare. Uh, it'll then you can connect what Wi-Fi you want to connect to, and then it'll go right to the uh, video feed of it. So it's not bad at all. It's better than the third-party um, app that I was looking at. But it's just the fact that I can't change, take the timestamp off, and it's in MOV for the playback on my phone to hear the audio. That sucks, because I do use uh, an app, a video editing app, on my phone. It'd be nice to be able to edit in, on my phone, and MP4 would allow me to do that a lot better than MOV. So please, some Sonic, change that. That would get your rating up to a perfect 5.5 right now battery life I'm working with. I've got about a quarter of battery life left. So we'll see how far I'm, I'm able to get with that. Alright, so for the most part, the conditions are completely unfavorable. I mean, it's just terrible conditions for filming. To be able to hear me over the motor, my exhaust is a little loud on my truck. So my exhaust, you got the windshield wiper blades going, you got it like it's raining like crazy. The camera does not obstruct my view whatsoever, so this is like the ultimate vlogging camera. You just stick it on and go. I mean, you don't have to deal with those stupid suction cup mounts that protrude way out or anything like that. It's like its own tiny little thing. I mean, you don't even notice it. I've got it all the way up against the top uh, of the window, and it's completely out of the way. I love that. That's awesome. Get rid of the timestamp, Subsonic, and the MOV, the MOV format, please. This is awesome. I love it so far good stuff. And also one other thing that since I'm driving along and using this as a vlogging camera right now, which I think makes a fantastic one by the way, but the hinge, the hinge free flops a little bit too much and as I drive along, you know, it can bump and then you see it kind of tilt down like that. The hinge has no re resistance in it, see it's kind of free, free floating sort of, and you're, not, you're a little crooked right now, but uh, the hinge, see how it just dropped down again, and I can see it on my phone, on the suction cup mount, on the phone, off to the side, which is awesome. I'm able to start, stop, play this, and have this totally not blocking anything, but if the hinge itself had more resistance in it, it would make this camera that much more appealing for this kind of application, and for anything that you're shooting if you want to adjust the tilt. You're sitting on a gold mine, Subsonic, if you would just change three things right now. So far, three things. MOV format, timestamp on it, being able to go MOV, MP4, remove the timestamp, and make the hinge a little more resistant to where it would stick in the position instead of free, or free swinging. All right, so let's just see if I can control the crotch shot. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm coming up to a red light right now, and I think I might take control. It's the crotch shot! Alright, so if it is, the battery is dying, you get rapid flashing on the front, uh, and it will not let you go into Wi-Fi mode. Um, so I guess it kind of helps to not drain the battery as fast. And that's what it's going into now. It's not allowing me to go into Wi-Fi mode, so I'm not going to be able to do Wi-Fi right now because the battery is so low. And that may be my fault for not charging it up enough, but I felt like it had been charged enough, but maybe not. So I think it's still going by the guidelines, I'd say, of, you know, an hour of battery life. I think that's what it's shooting at right now based on when I charged it up, messing with it through the review, through the unboxing, and now uh, that equates to about an hour is what I'm able to 
probably get out of it right now. But I was playing with it a lot. I was playing with the Wi-Fi a lot. So that's kind of maybe expected, I'd say. But shoot for an hour, not the 80 minutes. All right, so I just finished the video testing part of it, and as you just was able to see, that uh, the audio video is, you know, the audio is poor. Uh, if you want to see the true uh, video, uh, more like what it actually is, go over to YouTube. Uh, you can get a more accurate idea there. Just search Isaiah's Reviews there and uh, watch the video within YouTube to get a better idea of the uh, actual video and audio part of it. But I had to downsize to get it into Amazon video, but the video is not the best in the world by far, uh, but it is okay for its size, for its small size. It's not, if you compare it up to a, a Hero 4, the, the, the GoPro, which is about the same size or so, you know, the Hero is a lot better, but it's also a lot more expensive. So uh, given its price point, the video kind of falls into that average, what you would expect. The audio is terrible. It's uh, inaudible almost. It's basically this is going to be used for filming something and adding some music to it, I think. Um, I would not rely for the audio off of this at all because there's your audio hole, I'm assuming. Um, it's just muffled. It's just completely muffled. If they would, uh, now they're not saying that's waterproof in anything by any means, so if they could actually put a, uh, uh, a good mic hole spot in there and a decent mic uh, it, that would help out a lot um, hence the HTC Re. Now if you see the HTC Re which is about in this price point it's a lot better because of the app the mic and the video quality is a little bit better so if they're in the same price range as the HTC Re is right now uh, this is not uh, that great this is going to average a three out of five stars uh, regardless of how you look at it, because uh, yes, this is a nice touch, and so is the built-in suction. That's awesome. I really like that a lot. But when you go to uh, uh, mess with this at all, you know, see, it, it just swings back down. So, so what if your windshield's at this and you want it to you want it to go like that, you know, at you? Well, it's going to swing down like that. If they could put uh, a little more grip in this hinge and allow it to stick wherever you put it, that would be nice. Uh, this this works great on glass, no problems at all. I left it on there running errands through town uh, for quite a while and it, it worked fantastic. Uh, this works great. I, I stuck it on, the, on a buggy uh, in the grocery store and it stuck and held just fine, so I have no doubts about that. It's just the hinge. Now let's get into the app part of it. You can't it, it formats an MOV. Um, if you're working with Android, uh, you're probably not going to be able to pick up the audio off of that, or at least I couldn't. Uh, I could pick, it up, pick up the video once I downloaded it, but I couldn't review or play it back with audio uh, on an Android device because of the MOV. If it was MP4, I feel like I could receive the audio off of it and uh, handle 
uh, the video better within uh, phone apps and things like that, like video editors on your phone. So I wouldn't look to be able to edit and do anything with this possibly on your phone. You might get the playback for the visual effect, but not the audio. I was able to get audio, of course, um, on my PC uh, just fine, and I was edit, able to edit, and I could, you know, turn that over into MP4 and editing if I wanted to from MOV and reformat that. But that should be an option within the app that you want it formatted in MOV or MP4, since they're gearing this toward uh, Android users and iOS users. And another concern is the timestamp on the top left. It's always there. You can't turn it off in the app. So they need to do some work on the app to help uh, bring that up to standard. I'd say it's below standard with the other uh, cameras out there. I mean, this has a ton of potential. There's a lot of potential here, improving the mic, improving the hinge, and improving the app and the format that it films in. Uh, if they did all that stuff, they've got a jewel on their hands. I mean, even with the mediocre video quality, it's still like an awesome product for the price. Being able to do all this stuff and not having to have all these attachment on, attachments on you at any given time. So that's nice. But it's just the, the lackluster app, the lackluster format, and the performance which just brings this down to a 3 out of 5. This has been Isaiah's Reviews with the Sumsonic Coca Plus Mini HD 1080p digital video action camera with the uh, sticky mount and the magnetic mount on the back. Thanks for watching.